Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Uh, if you guys don't know me, my name is Aldrin. For, you, for those of you that are visiting, my name is Aldrin. And uh, I get the privilege to uh, uh, preach the sermon for today. I'm doing the first part and the second part. Uh, Nick is doing the second part. Amen. Um, so uh, I just want to give thanks to the Lord for allowing me to preach. Uh, give thanks to Jared for the opportunity to preach. Um, but this week started off uh, pretty rough, huh? Yeah. Um, we got Elsa going on. Uh, it was a it was a big scare, but uh, it wasn't too bad. I would say it was it was a tease, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It swerved, but um, yeah. But uh, they sent a lot of people from home from work. They uh, they they let people off work early. But uh, so our lesson for today is about storms. My lesson is how to prepare for a storm. And uh, I want you guys to uh, turn to Jeremiah 17, verse 5 to 8. Come on, bro. Go. It says, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will not dwell in parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Whose confidence is in him, they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Mm. And uh, point number one is it's hard to foresee the future. Amen. And uh, what do we do to prepare for a storm? Like a, a category two, category three, even four. We uh, stock up on food, right? Yeah. Food, water. Um, maybe uh, get some batteries, yeah. charge your devices. You should, yeah. uh, but there's two options. You can either stay at your house, build your house up, or you can go to a shelter. Yeah. Well, building your house up, you can, you can uh, put planks on the windows, uh, like uh, brace your garage door, clip your roof. Yeah. Uh, we go into a shelter, you just pack some of your possessions, then go to a shelter. It's pretty easy. Yeah. And that's, what would, that's what, how it is with life. Uh, when you think you have an understanding of your own self and not, uh, and not uh, rely on God, it's like building your house up, but you don't guarantee your life. Um, when you choose a shelter, you rely on God, and you guarantee your life. It doesn't matter what your possessions is. It's all uh, temporary, but your uh, spirit... Is eternal. And uh, when you give up your pride and go to a shelter, and God is our shelter, you know how it is, and uh, submit to the Lord, commit to the Lord, and he will take care of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, point number two is the storm is always coming. Uh, let's, let's turn to Matthew 14, 25 to 33. Uh, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out to his I reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Wow. Um, I just want to point out that we always must strengthen our faith. Yeah. Every day we strengthen our faith. Uh, there's always trials. There's always sufferings. There's always persecution. But with God, uh, we can get through them. Yeah. Amen. On, but... To strengthen your faith, what do you need to do? Um, as disciples, every day, every time is for God. And we make time for other things. We make time for our jobs. We make time for our people. But our number one priority is God. Um, but to uh, strengthen your faith, do you, re uh, you have to read the Bible consistently. You have to have a routine. Um, you have to have quiet times. Um, when you read the Bible, do you understand the word and put it in your heart? Yeah. Wow. Or not just reading it, just to read it? 
Um, uh, and also, when you read the Bible, do you put it into action? Yeah. Uh, when Jared announced that I was going to be uh, uh, preaching for today, last uh, Sunday service, I was a little scared. I was, I, was, uh, I was shocked. It was bittersweet. It's an honor, but I'm only a uh, disciple for three uh, months. Three months. 19 years old. I was like, whoa. It's a big challenge, but uh, 1 Timothy 4.12, don't let anyone look down on you because of your age. Um, but uh, with that, I, I, uh, I prayed and fasted because I couldn't have any uh, topics in my head. So... I tried to do it by myself, but I couldn't. I went to the Lord, asked him, I prayed, I fasted. I want to be uh, as close to God as I can be. And uh, the next day, he gave me a bunch of ideas. Wow. Amen. <laughs> it was at work, too. So, <laughs> um, But uh, living in life is being in like a storm. Uh when you focus your attention on God, it's like being in the eye of the storm. Mm-hmm. It is calm. It is peaceful. Yeah, that's right. wow. And everything around you is evil, wicked. Uh, yeah, come on, bro. Um, well, the point is, when you're not in Christ every day, you're losing every day. Wow. Um, when Kaylee got baptized, yeah. it's just amazing. Yeah. Kaylee got baptized last Sunday, and now we have Shamari getting baptized today. Let's go, bro. Um, the church was full of excitement. Yeah. It was full of joy. Yeah. Everyone was smiling. Kaylee was smiling. It was, it was awesome. And uh, uh, there's, uh, in Luke 15, 10, it says, in the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Wow. So it's a great celebration in heaven and on earth with the kingdom. Everyone was happy except for one, and that is Satan. When Kaylee got baptized, when anyone gets baptized, Satan gets scared. He's shaking. A man's trembling. But um, Satan comes to seek and destroy. But you know why that is? It's because... Satan was a perfect angel, amen? He was, he was an angel that made one mistake, and then God casted him out. To hell you go. And then, but us, with us, we sin all the time. We stumble, even as disciples. But we, we always pick our cross up, amen? Amen. But um, God loves us so much. We are so special that God died for us. Even if we sin, God says, try again, my son, my daughter. Try again. Pick your cross up and follow me. And um, Satan is jealous. That's why he wants to destroy us. He wants to kill us. He wants to lead us away from righteousness. And uh, the most amazing thing is he died on the cross for us to show his love. And no one has ever done that in history. Died for us and rose from the dead after three days. You know, Jesus doesn't want perfection for us. He wants our strive, our desire to be righteous. And uh, if we have great faith in Jesus, why don't we obey his commands and share his word more powerfully as a church? And if we're united, you know, the devil can't touch us. Um, But I just want to Tell you guys that always be prepared, always be ready, because the devil comes in sheep's clothing. But it's like a wolf in a sheep's clothing. But, and uh, it's always going to try to break our kingdoms. So always be ready, read your word, and have great faith. Amen. And uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, allowing me to preach, and uh, to God be all the glory. Amen. And now I'm going to have my brother Nick preach the second level. That, that was awesome. That was awesome, Aldrin. That was a great, a great intro. Um, fantastic, fantastic setting me up for a good play now. I uh, appreciate it. I brought my water because I'm going to be sweating for some reason. 
I, I don't understand why, but every time I get up here, I sweat. Um, so <laughs> I'm gonna be prepared. Hopefully, I don't knock it over. So um, before I start, I am going to pray to God. Amen. Um, so if you are, are able and willing, join me on your knees. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take pregnant pauses. <laughs> so, um, the title of my lesson, which is apt, his uh, the title of Adrian's lesson was you know preparing for the storm. So mine is in the middle of a storm. What do you do? What do we do in the middle of a storm? So if you would turn to me with me to Luke 12, and let me get a storm when you're there. I'm gonna do Luke 12, and it's gonna be verse uh, 33. I have, I have a bookmark. I should, should probably use that. Storm. Oh, I got one storm. Got one storm. Is that category one? Category. Oh, category two. I heard category three. All right. I'll take you to category five. Go ahead. Let's go. So um, the Bible reads from a verse 33 through 34. And I got it. Okay, cool. Sell your possessions and give it to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that you will uh, not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes uh, near, near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So this was, I've, I've read this scripture quite a few times, but I've never actually looked up what the term treasure means. I always thought it was like money or something. Where's my treasure? You know, where's my money, I guess? I don't know. But actually, if you look up in the Greek, treasure means storehouse. So where your storehouse is, there is your heart will be also. Mm, interesting, right? So I have to ask myself, where's my storehouse, right? And we think about it like if we think about like money, where do we invest it? We're going to invest it where we can get the most gains, right? I'm not going to invest it where I get no percent back, right? Um, I want to invest it where I can get the most gain. But it also takes faith to invest it because you could lose it all. Uh, some a Bitcoin or something like that. I, I don't want to throw shade or nothing. Uh, dog coin. I, I don't know exactly. I don't invest in these things, so I don't exactly know. But... I know that you can lose it all, so it takes a little bit of faith. Yeah. Most of most uh, econ economists, I think I pronounced that correctly, <laughs> most of them um, say that if you just keep it in there, it will grow annual over time, right? No matter if it fluctuates or not, right? Yeah. So when uh, there's a storm, what is the thing that you're going to invest in most? Your house, right? You would want to take care of your house because I'm like, hey, if my house isn't up to par, then it's, uh, that storm is going to have its way with me. <laughs> right? And I don't, want, I don't want that, right? So without it, we won't, we won't make it. And that's where we keep all the other essentials like yeah. our batteries or, you know, our kids. Or I don't have kids, but, you know, kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and kids, yeah. You have to charge up. The, okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, and then uh, Aldrian uh, quite, quite aptly pointed that out, that we need prayer, and he went on fasting. Yeah. So what, what is that house we, do we have for as Christians? It's God, right? Yeah. God is our, our house, right? Yeah. So I want to uh, read something else here that um, can happen to us all uh, here. So we're going to go to uh, 1 uh, Corinthians Amen. chapter 1. So I'm gonna get, on, let me get a foolishness when you're there. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 18. Yes, you, you, you'll, get, you'll get it when you're there. Foolishness, foolishness yes. Yeah, so, foolishness. Yes, yeah. yes, there's a lot of foolishness going on today, I guess. So, <laughs> so uh, the Bible reads, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God, right? 
So point number one, are you perishing? It's a solid question, right? We have to ask ourselves this a lot of times. I have to ask myself this this week because um, we shouldn't wander out the house of God, but for sure, I was like, you know what? I think, I'm, I don't think it looks cool outside. The sun's shining. Uh, a little bit of uh, meteorology here. Uh, I, I've, I've only heard this. I, I don't necessarily know. I've never been in the middle of a storm. But apparently, in the middle of the storm, in the center, nothing happens. But the most dangerous part is right, out, right outside the eye. It's called the eye wall. That's where all the winds and all the, the rains are, right? So my parents actually told me about, uh, it's called Hurricane Gilbert. I don't, I don't know if anybody knows that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not just a legend. So um, my parents were telling me about, uh, at one point in time, when Gilbert was there, the, the eye actually passed over them. So they were, they were experiencing the eye wall, and then the eye passed over them, right? So then they were like, oh, the hurricane's done. Everything's cool. Everybody started going outside. Yeah, it's good out here. We're having a party, right? Um, I, and then picking stuff up. And then on the radio, they, hear, they heard the announcer saying, hey, this, the eye is passing over us. You should probably stay in your house because it's going to pick up soon. Yeah. So the, it, it was quiet. And then all of a sudden, this is the eye wall, the most powerful part wow comes and snatches it, right? They just start snatching things, things start flying. You got projectiles, and I was like, wow, that's kind of crazy, because just when you think everything's good and safe, that's when Satan gets you, you know? So um, it's, it's like being in the eye of the storm. So I think of the eye of the storm, like, like Aldrin was, was pointing out, as being with God. And then when you venture out, you're like, I think I left something out there. I think I left my Xbox. I don't know what an Xbox will be doing in the rain, but amen. <laughs> I left my Xbox, so I'm going to venture outside and go grab it, right? Then you get snatched up. Maybe the Xbox is the projectile. Uh, <laughs> so um, there we have, we have that, but my, my projectile of choice is, I guess, freeing up my time. That was what I was thinking. I was like, I just, just want some, some freedom of time. But then I thought, for what? What, what do I free my time up to do? Okay, so when somebody cancels a plan, what do I do? I'd like to say, uh, I pray more. I'd totally like to say, I, I say, hey, how can I serve somewhere? I'd like to say, I'd reach out to somebody and encourage somebody. But that's not what I do. I play video games. That's, that's what I do. I know, I got free time. That's extra time to play video games. So I then go and play video games, and uh, for all of us who know what playing video games is like, you play video games and you think it's like two hours, it's like two o'clock now, it's like eight o'clock, I gotta go to bed. I'm like, what was the point anyways? Now I need more time, <laughs> right? I need more time to go play more video games. So what have I really gained? Nothing, right? But um, being a servant of Christ, you gain everything, right? So if you turn with me uh, to 1 Corinthians, we're still in the same book, and we're going to go to uh, chapter 9, actually. Uh, and uh, let me get uh, Boxer when you're there. Yes. 9, and we're going to read verses. Uh, we have a lot of boxers here. Does anybody take you home the belt? Okay. No, <laughs> so we're going to go to uh, 26. Let me, let me turn here to myself. Yes, 9, 26, so we're going to read verses uh, 26 and 27 for you here. So it says, therefore, I do not run like someone is running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave. So that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Right? So if you think about it, I don't want to fight as if fighting for nothing. I don't want to box as if boxing for the air. I'm not learning anything that way, right? Yeah. I want to fight for God, right? <clears throat> so in this fight for God, you, the, 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 it's not the things that is the problem. So my second point is focus on the heart. Because it's not the things. It's not if I eliminate things, it, it fixes my problem. It's if I fix my heart, it fixes my problem, right? Yeah. Um, so, 
Yes, right? So don't focus on the things to remove, but focus on the sin to remove from your heart. Um, because I was thinking, oh, yeah, if I, if, I just, if I just got rid of maybe this one you know, meeting, maybe if I, didn't, I didn't have to go to midweek. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe if I take, took that out, I could play some more video games. But if you think about it, if my heart was to serve God, it didn't, it didn't even matter where I'm at. As long as I'm serving God, it doesn't matter. This is where my heart is. Right? This is where my storehouse is. My storehouse is in the kingdom, not in getting more time to do what? Yeah. Play games, right? Yeah. So, um, and uh, God wants everybody to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's yeah. what he wants. So he wants us to deny ourselves. I, I, I like how you, you read the scripture for me already, uh, Jared. appreciate that. <laughs> I didn't put down the reference here. So, um, so the, question, the, 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 the question and the final call is the third point is slave to God or slave to sin. So um, I'm going to challenge us all to go after making sure if you're, if you're visiting with us, I know Shamari, you're going to get baptized. So you've gone after this, continue to go after this, bro. Um, so I want you to go after this week, reading your Bible, because uh, faith comes from the message, from hearing the message, right? I want you to go after jumping into a Bible study, right? Because you want to be studying the Bible with somebody. That would be awesome. And go after fellowship, watching our lives. Because I don't want to be a hypocrite. But if you see me as a hypocrite, call me out. By all means, I'm here. Right? And the same for the members. Read your Bible. Pray. Meet up with your mentor. Or, you know, your discipler. But, and, and fellowship. Because as Romans 7.15 calls us, we want to be delivered by Christ. We don't want to have the mindset of slavery, but the mindset of freedom in Christ. And to God be all the glory.